As England's most capped footballer, Peter Shilton, played more than 1,000 games in a 30-year professional career. But he says he lived two lives. One as a hugely successful footballer. Another where he blew millions, literally millions of pounds on horse racing. This week, Peter and his wife Steph have taken a petition to Downing Street to get gambling ads on football shirts banned. They are also calling on high-profile footballers to stop promoting gambling firms. And in his new book, Saved, he writes about how gambling controlled his life and how his wife pulled him back from the edge. So, so this is an extract from, from what is um, uh, an absolutely brilliant book, Saved, where, where Peter writes... Despite the obvious scars left from my addiction, I know I have truly won my battle against gambling and the bookies. Meeting Steph really was the turning point in my life. My dad called her a little gem, and she sure is. I want to leave you now, my friends, with this quote. Addiction is giving up everything for one thing. Recovery is giving up one thing for everything. And I'm delighted to say Peter and Steph join me now. Well, it's an emotional book, Peter, because you say Steph essentially saved your life and without her, you don't know if you would have got through this. That's true, Dan. Yeah, very much so. Um, we had a long journey together. It wasn't, it wasn't easy, but, um, you know, Steph, Steph treated it as an illness. You know, she had 20 yes. years in the NHS and that helped me, I think. You know, I didn't feel, uh, you know as though I was an addict, I was ill. And I sort of then faced up to the fact that I needed to, um, you know, to do things dramatically to try and pull myself away from the edge. So, Steph, how hard that was, was that for you? Because you obviously, you love the man. He's, he's the, the love of your life. But you're literally seeing him ruin his, his life. And I know what it's like dealing with addicts. It's, it's one of the most difficult soul-destroying things. He was. It was heartbreaking, you know, because he's such a wonderful man and he's this huge icon and he had this, this chronic, what I call as illness. I will always call it an illness. It is. And, it absolutely is. And, and um, yeah, so, it, as you say, it's soul-destroying, And um, but I wasn't going to quit. Um, you so, know. How, how, so you've obviously got your experience in the NHS. I had no experience of um, gambling addiction, I have to say that. Um, I did a small stint on um, special care baby unit and I saw alcoholic and drug abuse um, and um, babies being weaned off of that throughout my 27 year career. But, um, but it, it, so I had no experience of gambling addiction and so I had to learn as I was going really um, I learned everything about the condition through sort of more or less studying it with Pete. So we... And Peter, obviously one of the big issues is that football and professional football and gambling seem to be so intrinsically linked in so mm. many ways. And you think that makes it very, very difficult for footballers or, or, or football fans? Yeah, I mean, um, I think football betting now has become the biggest thing. You know, when I started, it was horse racing. But um, football has now been, you know, overtaken with, with gambling. You know, in so many ways, you can bet so many things on a football match. I mean, our big thing is, is, is football shirt advertising mm. because... You know, so you think we, that should be illegal? Yes, I think that should be banned. That's one of the things, we, but our, our one that we think, because we think it's a backdoor way of, of getting youngsters and then the next generation of gamblers to, uh, you know, to associate ga uh, football with, with fun and gambling, which is not right. And Steph, you have taken this petition to Downing Street this week. Do you get any sense that the government are taking this seriously or that they're prepared well, to change? Peter also delivered a handwritten letter to, um, to Boris Johnson. Boris Johnson. What, what did it say? Um, it, there was a lot in there, but really it was, you know, that we want to... The aim is that we want to try and protect the youth um, in the country. We're concerned about that because, I mean, when I grew up, I don't know about you, Dan, but bookmakers had to... The windows had to be sealed yeah, off. Yeah, yeah. It was forbidden for under 18-year-olds to go anywhere near it, you know, and now we're freely seeing betting and gambling going on around our children. Um, so we really highlighted that in the letter, didn't you, Peter? Yes, and, um, yeah. We're hoping 
hoping that he's going to respond. And obviously, we we um, we hand delivered a book as well. Mm. So yeah, it was a little message because we we have we did meet Boris and, and carry it at the Euro finals, and um, uh, we you know we had a little chat with them. So hopefully he, they'll he's take aware the, of what we're they'll doing. take the time to read yeah. it. I think he definitely will. But but Peter, what would be your message to him and the other uh, politicians who? would be making this decision t tonight? How, how would you explain to them why mm. this is so important? Well, you know, it's, it's an under-the-surface, you know, condition, really, or addiction. You know, I don't think a lot of people realise it. A lot of people think, oh, I can have a turn on, a, on Betty and it doesn't bother. But there's an awful, ever-increasing number of people who are getting addicted through the modern-day um, online gambling with so many different things to gamble on. And we really think there's a review by the government and it's a one and only time since 2005 when they were given carte blanche to do what they wanted, betting companies, by uh, Tony Blair. Um, we feel that it's the chance now to really uh, put the reins on, the, on what is an ever-increasing profit-making uh, industry. I think it's also important. We're not anti-gambling, you know, so there's a lot of people out there that enjoy a little flutter and a little bet. You know, I used to like a day with the girls at the races. You know, we are talking about protecting children and vulnerable individuals. So you're not saying all gambling no, should all. be illegal? No, not at all. No, a lot of people no, enjoy it. But the, the amount of advertising, uh, I mean, if you look at Formula One many years ago, you know, cigarettes, you know, they, they finished with that and they've survived. You know, there's a lot of talk about it, some of the clubs might go under because of banning shirt advertising there's a lot of clubs who survive and they mm -hmm. they find other people if you if you've got a model of, of a business and you're relying on betting industry to support that then it's a it's a bad business so yeah we definitely want changes especially i think on pop-up advertising you know and um and uh, you know shirt banning and it's that sort of thing constantly in your face mm. isn't it for all of us Indeed. And, and Peter, reading Saved, uh, it really is shocking just how much your gambling addiction could, could overshadow your life. And you say for 45 mm. years, it, it was a huge part of your life. You're six years clean now, which is obviously a brilliant yeah. thing. But emotionally, it's still difficult, isn't it? T tell me that, that, that there's a quote in the book where you talk about what it's like for you, even just when you walk past a bookies now. Yeah, it's a good, it's a good thing, because when I walk by a bookmaker now, I mean, I'm totally convinced. I mean, I know I'll never have a, a bet again, because I suddenly know what the industry's like. And when I walk by a betting shop, I get nausea, because I feel sorry for the people in there who have got no chance of winning. Uh, there's a very, very small percentage of people actually maybe win at gambling. But it's, it's, it's money wasted and time wasted. And the sooner a lot of people realise, it took me a long time to realise that, um, but it, but it um, I eventually, thankfully, through help from Steph, realised it. And um, I think that's the important message we're trying to get over to people. Because I'd always said to Pete, don't look back, just keep going forward, you know, when he quit. So don't look over your shoulder, it doesn't matter. Just keep going forward. Um, and I think that helped him, mm. you know. But, but the reality of it, because, I look, I, I know people who've had gambling addictions, and the reality is quite crazy and this is why I know it's an addiction because no one would be that reckless with their own fortune it, it doesn't make sense and and in your book you, you actually say that the money you lost runs into the millions mm. and you checked out the records and you lost more than eight hundred thousand pounds to bet fair alone mm. And obviously the highs were very high, weren't they? Because you say on one day you placed a five hundred pound bet and you won thirty three thousand pounds. On another day you placed a one thousand bet on a treble and you won forty thousand pounds. But the other good days. How much could you lose on a bad day? Um, I think uh, probably twenty thousand pounds on a really on, bad on day. One day. Yeah. I mean, wow. there's a lot of probably people who bet now would be betting in a lot bigger stakes, but. In my, you know, when you when you earn so much, you'll you'll bet whatever you earn. I mean, if you earn twenty pounds a week, you'll bet that. You know, if you earn a million pounds, you know, you'll bet that. It, it, the nature of gambling is, you know, you're on a high, and if you win, you're on a high, and but you want to win again. And then if you lose, you're still on a high because you've been, you know, sort of 
gambling mm. and it's just a continual cycle and eventually when you do have wins you give it them back it's just it's just the way gambling is and and physically you just can't stop yourself it, it, it's exactly the same as it a becomes a way of life yeah I, I think a lot of people it's, it's a hobby and then with me it was a hobby and then it got more and more and then eventually you know I, it just came a way of life and it wasn't until later on especially when I met Steph that I realized that there was an addict but I know that's a silly he thing to say. He didn't realise he's till he quit. Yeah. He thought he had a bit of a problem. That's the part of it. Part of the condition is yeah. that they, they don't see, they're in denial, so much denial, and it's such a secretive condition. Mm. Um, it's, all, it's all done in secret, and mm. um, so, that, you know, it's hidden away very Absolutely. much. And, and, Peter, is that because you felt shame? Is, is there a shame connected to it? Is that why you don't express it, or is it literally you just are in denial? Um, no, I just think it, you, you get into a routine, you know, it, it, you get on a high, it becomes a way of life, you don't really, you get to a point, I got to a point where I didn't really think about it, I just gambled, you know, whether I won or lost, it was, became a way of life, you know, I, I, you know, I had time on my hands and, and, you know, I had highs and I had lows, you know, but it's only when you, you look back and you, you look at the what it does to you, that I thought, there must be a better way of life. You know, there must be a better way to spend your time. And you found it. And I found it. And, I, you know, it's not easy. I mean, you, the thing I do in the book is obviously say to people, look, there is a way, you can stop. We do it, I do explain, you need to put other things in place. It's not easy, though. And, no, it's not easy. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you have a little, you know, not that I've had a wobble, but some people do. It's not the end of the world. And we talk, I talk about that. Yeah. And Steph talks about the other side with the, the yeah, families around an addict. Beating any addiction mm. is not going to be straightforward. No. And, and some people will have bumps in the road. And I guess it's about making sure that when you have that bump in the road, you don't go all the way back and say, well, it hasn't been worth it. Because actually you've come so far not to do it for a period of time. Well, look, we've got questions pouring in, a couple on gambling, some on football, so, so, so let me get to them now. Um, Sean, via the GB View's Twitter account, asks, do you think Labour were wrong to allow more betting <laughs> adverts and gambling in 2005 with the Gambling Act? Which is a Most good question. Definitely. Yeah. I mean, obviously, it's, it's increased, it's increased, and it's increased, and... Um, you know, it's um, it's just incredible, really, how much gam adverts are now, it's, and how much profit the bookmakers are making, how many addicts are on the increase. The legislation needs to make sure that it's safeguarding, and I personally can't see any safeguarding. I mean, when I found Pete's bank statement, and I realised he was chronic and how bad things were, you know, I emailed the betting company, I begged them for help, used, I gave them his username, his name, they obviously knew who he was, and they didn't act on that. Gosh. They did nothing, they didn't put any markers mm. on. These are the sort of See, things, Dan, that need to be looked because at. Because that means that a loved one or a relative, yeah. mother, father, wife, husband, whoever it is, brother, sister, is, is powerless. Well, we, we've, had, powerless. we've heard worse than that. Really worse than that, um, so, you know, from people. But, but and especially, we, see, once you're married, it's, it's your money together, really, isn't it, as well? That's I think as a loved one, you must make sure that you separate yeah. your finance, you know, so that's a big yeah. message for me tonight, yeah. for yeah. anyone out there. No, sensible. Um, Benny, via uh, the GB uh, News Twitter account, says... Do you think Brian was the best manager England ever had? Sorry, best manager England never had. Brian Clough. Yes. Definitely, yeah. <laughs> but he is... Um, Peter Taylor is assistant. They were a good... A bit like Morecambe and Wise. They were a great team, but Cluffy was somebody special. Lee, via GB Views, asks, is Jack Grealish really worth £100 million? obscene amount of money given what is going on in the world right now. And Peter, this is a fascinating one, isn't it? Because I just wonder if you worry for these young players, because obviously we're talking about gambling, and I do know, not Jack Grealish, of course, but there are young, famous footballers who are struggling right now with, with gambling addictions. And it doesn't make sense for any human being to be on that sort of money. Can I ask you both something, though? Yeah. Um, clubs have come out in the last couple of days and said that they would lose so much money, um, you know, if they took gambling, gambling adverts, away, yeah. adverts away from the shirts. So why are they paying this much money? How do they find the money to pay? Is it well, because that's, that's foreign big clubs argument. are allowed to yeah. uh, do gambling advertising? That, that would be 
the question, I guess, when yes. people go to foreign leagues where, where that sort of yeah. gambling is, is legal China or South American countries? Yes. I mean, yeah, you know, I, I think... Um, yeah, listen, is anybody worth £100 million? But it's all about the market. And, and yeah. clubs uh, form their own market. You know, they, they, it's what they're willing to pay. So what Fees should he are going do? up, wages what are going up. What should he do with that money? How does he manage that sense? Um, well, if he's sensible, he will have people around him. But as we know, you know, um, and I, I just hope that if, if there are players out there um, that they read my book and stop before they get involved in it, yeah. because it's a dead end. You won't win. You may get a lot, think you're getting a lot of pressure and a lot of relief, because when you're playing football, you're on a high, and a lot of players play two, maybe three games a week these days, and it's very difficult to come off a high, get down, then build yourself up. So they want to stay on a high, and the easy way to totally. stay on a high is gamble. Totally. Don't do it. Read the book. Please save your money. You'll have a far better life. Absolutely brilliant advice. I, I think you're both amazing and what a great relationship you have. Thank you. This is Peter Shilton and Steph Shilton Saved. It is out today, right, guys? Yes, yes. <laughs> publication day. <laughs> and Gary Lineker wrote, wrote the forward. Yeah, for, brilliant. Yeah. He's There's been very supportive, Gary. Yeah. And we've got yeah, Serene Duncan Smith and Caroline Harris. So loads of support we've had yeah. for it. Ronnie Cowan. Absolutely yeah. brilliant book. It's Thank, you. Absolutely Thank brilliant. you. And also very important too. And it will hopefully stop some of those players going in down that path. Thank you very much. Now, of course, a spokesperson for the Betting and Gaming Council has responded, telling us that their members introduced a ban on TV commercials during live sport before the 9pm watershed, which has led to a 97% reduction in the amount of ads being seen by children. They say that there are strict rules on advertising gambling and pointed out that the industry contributed £40 million to the EFL and its clubs during the pandemic.